Life in the office was as mundane as it gets, a cycle of meetings, reports, and the incessant ticking of the clock that seemed to mock my longing for something more, something different. My name is David, a name that adorned the placard on my desk, right next to my computer, in a sea of cubicles that made up the corporate landscape I navigated daily. Diligence and a reserved nature were my trademarks, a facade that hid my true self from the prying eyes of colleagues and superiors alike. But as they say, the best laid plans often go awry, and mine was about to unravel in the most unexpected way. It was one of those late nights at the office, the kind that drains you of your energy and leaves you longing for the comfort of your bed. Michael, my boss, was the kind of man who led with a charisma that was hard to ignore. He stayed back as well, burdened by the weight of unfinished business that couldn't wait till the morning. I too lingered, driven by a sense of duty and the quiet that the night offered, allowing me to work without the usual distractions. The inciting incident, however, wasn't just about work or the late hours. It was something far more personal, a slip that would expose the person I kept hidden behind closed doors. As I bent down to retrieve a file from the bottom drawer of my desk, the hem of my shirt lifted, revealing the edge of lace, a piece of my hidden world, a fragment of my true self. It was a pair of panties, a simple piece of fabric that represented so much more to me. Michael, passing by to collect a document from the printer, caught a glimpse. Time stood still, my heart raced, and the silence between us stretched into eternity. Michael's reaction was not something I could have predicted. The surprise on his face was evident, but it quickly gave way to something softer. A curiosity, perhaps. Or was it understanding? The office, with its fluorescent lights and the hum of the air conditioning, became the stage for a conversation I never imagined having, especially with my boss. David, is there something you'd like to talk about? Michael's voice was gentle, devoid of judgment, inviting a confession I had never dared to share. In that moment of vulnerability, I found courage. Yes, I began, my voice barely a whisper. There's a part of me you don't know, a part of me that finds solace in something as simple as the clothes I wear at home. The words felt foreign as they left my mouth, yet the truth in them was liberating. Michael listened, his demeanor supportive, as I shared the details of my private world, where David made way for another side of me, one that embraced femininity through cross-dressing. It was a revelation that could have ended in many ways, but Michael's response was nothing short of remarkable. I appreciate you sharing this with me, David. I can't pretend to understand everything you're going through, but know that you have my support, Michael said, his words offering a camaraderie I hadn't known I needed. Your personal life is your own, and I respect your privacy. Just know, you're not alone. The conversation that night changed everything. It didn't alter the deadlines, the meetings, or the endless reports, but it transformed something far more significant. My relationship with Michael and, in a way, with myself. His acceptance was a beacon in the often unforgiving corporate world, a reminder that beneath the suits and the professional facades were all human, each with our own stories, fears, and hopes. As I left the office that night, the weight on my shoulders felt lighter, not because my secret was out, but because I was seen, truly seen for the first time. The journey ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and possibly more revelations, but for the first time, I felt ready to face it, armed with a newfound sense of acceptance and understanding. The days following our late-night conversation at the office passed in a blur of routine work and silent reflections. Michael's understanding and support had opened a door I had long since resigned myself to keep closed. However, life, as it tends to do, had more surprises in store for me. One crisp morning, Michael called me into his cabin. The seriousness in his voice over the phone belied the casualness of our recent interactions, sparking a flicker of anxiety in my stomach. As I entered, I found him not alone but accompanied by Ethan, a close friend of his whom I'd met a few times at company gatherings. Ethan, with his easy smile and open demeanor, had always struck me as someone amiable. Yet today, there was an air of conspiracy between the two. 
Michael wasted no time in laying out the reason for the meeting. David, he began, his tone earnest. Ethan and I have been planning a week-long vacation to Goa. We want you to come with us. The proposition, startling as it was, took a moment to sink in. But what he said next was even more astonishing. Not just as David, he continued, but as Davida, if you're comfortable with that. The room seemed to spin as I processed his words. Goa, with its sandy beaches and vibrant nightlife, was a world away from the corporate confines I was used to. And to go as Davida? It was a dream I hadn't dared to dream, a freedom I'd never imagined experiencing outside the four walls of my apartment. But the proposition was not without its conflicts. The thought of stepping out into the world, embracing my identity as Davida in such a public and definitive way was terrifying. It wasn't just the fear of judgment from strangers, but the vulnerability of exposing a part of myself that had been private for so long. Yet there was also an undeniable pull, a desire to live openly, to be accepted wholly and without pretense. Michael and Ethan watched me, their expressions a mix of hope and understanding. Think of it as an opportunity, Ethan added, his voice encouraging. A chance to be yourself, without any reservations or fears, We'll be there with you, every step of the way. Their offer was generous, not just in terms of the financial support they were willing to provide, but the emotional support as well. It was a chance for personal growth, for exploration, and perhaps for finding a sense of belonging I hadn't realized I was searching for. After much deliberation, I agreed. The decision wasn't easy, fraught with anxiety and second guessing, yet beneath the layers of fear, there was a spark of excitement, a glimmer of hope for what this experience could mean for me, for Davida. The following days were a whirlwind of preparation. Shopping for clothes, shoes, and accessories that Davida would wear, experimenting with makeup, and even practicing mannerisms and expressions. Each step was a revelation, a piece of the puzzle fitting into place, revealing a picture of who I could be. As the day of departure drew closer, my nerves frayed and mended in equal measure. The thought of stepping into the airport, boarding a plane, and spending a week in Goa as Davida was exhilarating and terrifying. But with Michael and Ethan's unwavering support, I felt a strength I hadn't known I possessed. And so, with bags packed and reservations set, we embarked on a journey that promised to be nothing short of transformative. For the first time in my life, I was not just David, the diligent employee with a secret to hide, but Davida, ready to face the world with newfound courage and hope. The road ahead was uncertain, but for once the uncertainty felt like freedom, a canvas waiting to be painted with the vibrant colors of life. The transformation from David to Davida was not just a change of attire, it was a metamorphosis of soul, spirit, and self. Each piece of clothing, every brush stroke of makeup, felt like shedding layers of fear and stepping closer to the person I was meant to be. The physical changes, while significant, paled in comparison to the emotional evolution I underwent. For every outfit I tried, for every look I perfected in the mirror, there was an internal battle I fought and won, inching towards a horizon of self-acceptance and love. The days leading up to our departure were filled with anticipation and anxiety in equal measure. Shopping for Davida was an experience unlike any other. It was exhilarating to select dresses, skirts, and accessories that I felt not just represented Davida, but celebrated her. The act of choosing cosmetics, learning to apply them to enhance rather than mask, was a journey of discovery, of seeing the person I always knew was there emerge in the mirror before me. Michael and Ethan were pillars of support, their encouragement unwavering as I navigated this transformation. Their acceptance bolstered my courage, reminding me that, in their eyes, I was not embarking on this journey alone. As we arrived in Goa, the air tinged with salt and freedom, I stepped out not as David, but as Davida, my heart racing with a cocktail of fear and excitement. The vibrant streets, alive with colors and sounds, felt like a different world, one where the possibilities were as endless as the horizon. Navigating the complexities of public perception was a challenge. For every accepting smile, there was a lingering stare, a reminder of the societal judgments we were conditioned to fear. Yet, 
With Michael and Ethan by my side, the stairs mattered less and less. I was Davida, and with each step, I claimed a piece of the world as my own. Our days were filled with exploration, not just of the scenic beauty that Goa offered, but of the dynamics of our relationship. The bond between us deepened, transcending the conventional, as we shared moments of joy, laughter, and intimacy. The freedom to express myself fully, to be Davida without restraint, was a gift that unfolded in surprising ways, bringing us closer, weaving threads of understanding and acceptance into the fabric of our friendship. Yet, the journey was not without its trials. The realities of societal judgment, the whispers and stares, were a constant undercurrent, a test of my resolve. There were moments of vulnerability, of questioning whether the freedom to be myself was worth the scrutiny. But these moments were fleeting, overshadowed by the overwhelming sense of rightness that came with living authentically. The vacation in Goa was transformative, a pivotal chapter in my life where Davida was not just a part of me to be hidden, but a persona to be celebrated. The experiences we shared, the challenges we faced, and the unconditional support of Michael and Ethan helped me navigate the complexities of my identity, teaching me that the essence of who we are is not tied to the perceptions of others, but to the truth we hold within. As the sun set on our last day in Goa, the sky ablaze with hues of orange and pink, I stood at the edge of the water, the waves kissing my feet. In that moment, I realized that this journey was not just about finding acceptance in the eyes of others, but about discovering it within myself. Davida was not a mask to wear, but a truth to live, a reminder that the journey towards self-acceptance is fraught with challenges, but also filled with moments of unparalleled beauty and joy. The return from Goa marked not just the end of an unforgettable journey, but the beginning of a new chapter in my life. The sun-kissed memories and the freedom I had experienced as Davida lingered like a sweet perfume, infusing my everyday life with a sense of purpose and confidence I had never known before. However, the transition back to the reality of my corporate existence was not without its challenges. The dynamics between Michael, Ethan, and myself had shifted in ways that were profound and, at times, complicated. Our shared experience in Goa had broken down walls, revealing vulnerabilities and strengths in each of us that we had not been aware of before. While this newfound closeness enriched our relationship, it also introduced complexities into our professional interactions. Navigating my dual identity in the aftermath became a delicate balancing act. The confidence I found in Davida's persona spilled over into my life as David, emboldening me to embrace my true self in all aspects of my life. Yet I was acutely aware of the potential repercussions on my professional relationships and the boundaries that needed to be respected. The office environment, once a place of routine and restraint, now felt constricting in a way it hadn't before. My colleagues, unaware of the transformation I had undergone, sensed a change. Some were curious, others indifferent, but the question of how much of myself I could reveal lingered heavily in the air. The most significant consequence of our actions, however, was the introspection it prompted about personal boundaries and emotional well-being. The blurring of lines between personal and professional relationships necessitated a re-evaluation of boundaries, a realization that while acceptance and understanding from others were vital, respecting oneself and one's own limits was equally important. The resolution of these complexities came gradually, through open conversations with Michael and Ethan, through reflection on the nature of identity, acceptance, and love. I realized that living truthfully was not just about revealing one's true self to the world, but about honoring that truth with integrity and respect for oneself and others. Our relationships, though changed, were redefined on a foundation of mutual respect, understanding, and the recognition of individual needs and desires. Michael and Ethan remained my staunchest allies, but we learned to navigate our friendship and professional dynamics with a newfound awareness of the importance of boundaries. In the end, the journey to Goa and the transformation it wrought in me served as a powerful testament to the beauty of living authentically. It taught me that the essence of who we are cannot be confined to societal expectations or norms, but lies in the truth of our own experiences 
and the courage to embrace that truth. The story of David and Davida is one of discovery, transformation, and ultimately, acceptance. It is a reminder that the path to self-acceptance is fraught with challenges, but that the journey is worthwhile, leading to a place where love, respect, and understanding illuminate the way forward. As I stand at the threshold of what's to come, I am reminded that the most profound journey is not one that takes us to distant lands, but one that leads us closer to ourselves. And in that journey, the greatest discovery we make is not just who we are, but who we have the potential to become.